what does the church need to understand? Do you think your parents are proud of you? Are you single? People have had speculations that you're dating a businesswoman. I don't know whether I should say their name, uh, Michelle Talami, for a very long time. And you've never really spoken about whether you were dating Michelle Talami. What are the qualities that you look for in a partner? Are you excited to be a parent in future? Absolutely. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love children. Um, what would you tell someone who is struggling to come out? You said it's bring in, there's a word you said. What would you advise that particular person? Hello and welcome, my name is Kalondu Musimi. Kama kawaida, you see me, you see an exclusive interview about to go down. And right now, I'm seated next to the CEO and founder of Bold Network Africa. Please give it up for the one and only Chris McKenna. Hi, how are you doing? What's good? How are you doing? I'm good. You Such dope energy. I like it. Asante san. It made me miss my journalism days. Yeah. yeah. Aki, thank you so much. Coming from you, Aki, I really appreciate. And every time I meet you, whether one-on-one, -on -one, I'm uh, social media, you're always sharp. How would you describe your style um, qua every occasion? Um, I like to I like to feel good and dressing up makes me feel good. Yeah. I just like to look good. So for me it's not even it's a non issue. Yeah. Like if I know I'm doing something or I'm I'm going to the office, I'm doing meetings, I like to dress up. It doesn't mean that there are days where I'm tired of dressing up. For example today I was going to come to the office with uh, T-shirt and shorts, but when I knew that you guys were coming, I was like, okay, let me make sure I look good for the camera. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, McKenna dressed up for me and you guys, for everyone, for us, Cynthia. For everybody, for everybody, for everybody. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Bold Network Africa. Uh, I need to understand what it entails, because uh, on your bio it says it's uh, advocacy for LGBT. Uh, so Bold Network Africa is an organization that I founded over a year ago, um, but officially we are actually celebrating one year anniversary. We celebrated one year anniversary yesterday, but we're going to be doing something this week just to celebrate, like we're constantly celebrating. Um, what Bold Network Africa does is advocacy for the LGBTQ community using three different pillars. So number one, storytelling. Just because of my background in journalism, I do understand the importance of what stories do. Stories change different things. Stories create impact. So for Bold Network Africa, um, I was like, I want to be able to tell queer stories with the decency that they deserve. And also maybe by someone seeing someone's story, they will be able to also live their truth in that way. So there's one storytelling, then we also uh, do a lot of music and arts. We, I also do know what music has done to the world. You know, you see music from people like Sam Smith, all these different people, it creates impact. Chimano, you know, our very own. So music and arts. And then the third one that we absolutely love is education. So we do a lot of training to different corporates, uh, community-based, um, you know, uh, organizations or people in different communities. We like to come in and say, we want to train you and educate you around the LGBTQ community for you to be able to understand that when you stand 10 people, there are two people there who might be from the community. How are you supposed to be able to address them? What are the challenges that they go through? Because I realize that a lot of the discrimination that happens in our lives, people within the community, is because people do not know. You know, So once you educate someone, then you usually have a turnaround of someone saying, okay, I will be kinder, I will be more considerate. You know, Like us, before we started this interview, you said, I did not know about pronouns, but now that I know, I respect it and I see the importance of it. Yeah. Uh, that's very important and uh, one year down the line uh, what are some of the highlights and also challenges that bold network has faced you know i was say i was thinking to myself yesterday um, when i woke up and i was like man it's been a year um it's one thing to start a company you know it's one thing to be an entrepreneur to be a boss to run a company but it's another thing to be a boss an entrepreneur and run a company that does advocacy work for the LGBTQ community and that's and that's what Bold Network Africa does. So of course there have been 
so many challenges you know if people have been following my journey there are times that we have gone to the streets too much there are times that our events have been cancelled there are different situations we, we we are constantly talking about the people who have been killed in the community so of course there are very very many different challenges which i expected but of course every single day is very very different that day that you're just tired you know and you don't want to do it but also the wins the wins that have happened within this one year are something that I never even imagined. You know, seeing more allies, you know, waking up to saying, you know what, we see what Bold Network Africa is doing and we want to support the community. You know, when you see so many people having a turnaround, I've spoken to so many parents who tell me, keep on doing the work that you're doing because I now do understand my child better, you know, just because of the work that you're doing. When I see community members free to leave, to express themselves, to come for events, you know, be in a safe space and just be free, you know. When I see different policies being um, put into different organizations that we've trained, companies, like people saying, okay, we're going to change our HR policy to be actually inclusive. The wins are out of this world. And also from a personal level, you know, I've been able to participate in many different um, conversations with many different people, embassies, people in, people, in, people in government. The wins are also beautiful. So I think one year down the line, what I would say about Bold Network Africa is now we are, we are only getting bolder. You know, we're only getting bolder. The challenges are there, the wins are there. Second year is coming in, we're only getting bolder and to many more years to come. And this, seeing the media covering these kind of stories, inclusivity, 100%, I love it. I love it, yeah. yeah. And uh, we also saw bold beer. I don't know how that is picking up. Mm -hmm. So the first um, partnership that we did as Bold Network Africa was with uh, 254 Breweries. I had a conversation with the owner and we were like, we want to do something for Pride. You know, that was last year, June. And he was kind enough to say, you know what, let's create something. What do you think we should do? And we sat down together and we we're like, why don't you create a beer for people in the community called the Bold Beer? So Bold Beer has also been existing for one year. It's going to be existing for one year in June. Picking up very well, uh, planning to, you know, I hope that more people want to stock it. You know, we are, we are willing and ready to put it in many different places. But what I can confirm right now is that we are definitely stocked in a couple of places in Nairobi and we are definitely stocked in a couple of places in Mombasa. So people need to go to either Bold Network Africa's page, look at the post that we've done for the Bold Beer and you'll be able to see the different places where we are stocked. We are stocked in Chandarana, we are stocked in different places. So the Bold Beer was our biggest celebration for people in the queer community to feel, wow, there's a product for us. You know, there's a product for us. Yeah. And it can be taken by everybody. 100%. Yeah. It can be taken by everybody. It's every, every single time you buy a bold beer, you are helping someone in the community. So it's not only just a bold beer for the community, but also for allies or anybody else who says, okay, you know what, I want to make impact in the community. Every single time you buy a bold beer, we're all winning. Yeah. And, and bold is about inclusivity. So everyone is welcome. Yeah. yeah. And also, is it affordable? It is, it is. I don't think I know top of my mind, but yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's, it, it really plays on the same ground as any other normal beer. Yeah. I first knew you as a journalist. Are you going back to journalism? Are people approaching you to do media again? Uh, journalism will always be in my heart. If I'm going to go back to journalism from an employment point of view, I don't think so. Because I'm still living my dream as a journalist, running my own organization, still doing things around media. Uh, consultancy gigs, we will always be down to do those kind of different things. But going back full-time employment, not at this particular moment, I don't think so. I am really focused on my company and, and that's the goal. That's the goal. Yeah. Uh, so, so many people, not not so many people but some people don't really understand why you choose the pronouns them or they why i feel like i have explained this all my interviews <laughs> i think you need to explain it to me guys i will not do this again we will copy paste this interview yes. anyway we're all here to educate my pronoun is my preferred pronoun is they them because i identify as non-binary so non-binary is I do not conform to any binary. So binary is two. So male, female. I do not I do not conform to that. So that's why my pronoun cannot be he or she. At this particular point, gender evolves, gender identity evolves. But at this particular point, my gender identity is non-binary. So my pronoun is they then. Yeah. Do you do you find people uh, getting confused on 
why asking you a lot of questions and because it's a personal decision it is you to make the decision but you get people especially wase wenye bado hawaja understand asking you kwa nini una make a decision kwa nini ni secreted to a certain pronoun mm -hmm. i usually say education is something that you can either choose to integrate into your system or you can choose to remain in that space of not being educated and the world will forever move forward you're the only one who is going to remain in the same spot things about pronouns of course i get people who do not understand i educate those who want to understand the ones who do not want to understand it's it's not in my place the world is moving forward it's either they catch up with it or they will be left behind that's all i usually say so of course i meet so many different people there's some who get it there's some who don't still okay yeah. still okay are you pushing for lgbt to be legal in Kenya I don't have a word to say in Kenya are we pushing for the laws around criminalizing the LGBTQ community yes we are every single organization that works for the LGBTQ community including Bold Network Africa constantly pushes repeal 162 that is the law that has been used I keep on saying it is not even a law to me it's a weapon it's a weapon that is being it's on paper it's 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 been put out there so that people in the queer community continue being discriminated and fortunately being people in the queer community being killed you know when a law changes from actually being a law that helps people and it becomes a weapon we are always and constantly and we will not stop you know pushing for hashtag #repeal162 yeah like the case of Sheila Lumumba she was sexually assaulted she was killed when you received that th those news like that particular news um what was your reaction Sheila Lumumba may their soul rest in peace their pronoun is they them when 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 i received that news i was called by my head of communications and they were like something has happened you know at that particular point i shut down because i have just a few months ago last year it was the end of last year i received another call like that for our darling erica and now sheila you know and then after sheila there's been someone else you know for me on that particular day i was pained i was pained because after knowing exactly what happened you cannot have that kind of hate towards another human being just like you it's not even about sheila being queer it's not about who sheila loves it's about sheila being a human being you know and to date it pains me it's over a month we have still not heard from the government what justice is someone like sheila who is another human being a kenyan citizen just like anybody else why is the justice for sheila lumumba or is it another case of discrimination because sheila was part of the lgbtq community you know for me i keep on saying it pains me it it makes me so mad when when i think about it we've lost a life and even after losing that life we're still not seeing anything you know i got different calls from the office of the dpp no reports whatsoever you know we sit and we wonder is it another case of it's a queer person who has died so you know it's cool i think for me is to challenge the government and ask them if you are constantly asking us for our votes if you are constantly saying that we will protect you when you vote for us then what are you doing when we lose someone another human being a kenyan they, it does not matter how they identified where is justice for shila lumumba it's painful it's painful yeah do you foresee in kenya having someone in parliament that is going to represent the lgbtq community if 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 they're not ready we are ready you know that's what i keep on saying sometimes you don't even have to wait for people to say oh i'm going to step into this position and help if they're not ready we are we're ready and we don't even need to be in political rallies and stuff but we want government to say okay we want to be advised on issues like this where do we start you have to accept that you do not know you know maybe sometimes you're not dealing with these things because you do not know um in the future i would want i would hope to you know to 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 be in government to be able to help in this kind of different things but even before the future I don't even want to think about is there anybody right now because I don't think there is. We have allies who are politicians but still we don't see what they do for us. They don't do enough for us, you know. So if they're not ready, we are ready to step into those positions of power and be able to educate and create change and create impact, you know. Yeah. 
So you're, you're kind of like telling me you hope to get into politics uh, in future? In future, yeah. in future. I don't, I don't know if I'm looking at it as politics. Maybe I'm looking at it as something more government position you know it doesn't have maybe to be a political seat or something but in the future we will want to sit in those different kind of places just to create this kind of impact not just to sit there as an ally to actually sit there as someone who is part of the community understanding the challenges that people go through and what can we be able to do to change this yeah and also we've seen so many people coming out to say that they've been discriminated after they came out uh, did you receive discrimination every single day even this morning it happens every single day. <laughs> what happened this morning? I mean, everywhere. My comments, every time I go into my Instagram, I'm constantly being judged, constantly being corrected. So it happens through and through. Um, does it bother me? No. It's part of the work. It's part of the journey. And once you already know who you are, you do not even, n nothing else will ever phase you. Nothing else will ever phase you. So discrimination happens. I can totally understand people who say that, you know, once they come, once they came out, this and this and this happens. And also, it makes other people be even afraid to say who they are. You know, I, I usually say, it's not even coming out, it's letting people in. You know, you're letting people in to actually say, you know what, this is who I am. You know, it's painful when you let people in and then people come into your house and bash you, you know. So... I, I have gone through discrimination, I still go through it every single day. It doesn't phase me, it doesn't move me, it doesn't do anything. Yeah. Um, you, you're bold and you're loud about it. Uh, don't you feel uh, scared that your activism, activism can um, um, expose you to danger? I think it already has, if I would think about it. But what, what else are we supposed to do? is the question that I ask. I always say you have two options. Either to be bold and continue being bold and do the work, or to give up and go back and just disappear. If I do this, what impact will I have created, you know, for people in society? Not even only for the queer community, but even for other young people who want to be bold in whatever, in other different things that they're pushing. You know, there's someone who maybe wants to be a bold politician, you know, but they're young and they're afraid because, oh, in our culture, blah, 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 blah. No, I want people to be able to say I have two options in life. Either I step into my power and be bold about it, knowing what the consequences that will come with it, there will definitely be fear. I don't think there's anybody who is an activist in this country and even in the whole world who is not afraid. But we understand that this is the work that we chose to do. We speak to our God, you know, for protection and also just keep on doing the work without really letting the fear hold you down too much. We still have to do the work. Yeah. Uh, do you mind give us, giving us instances of when you are endangered? I don't think I should do that. I don't think I should do that because that's yeah. a security conversation. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. But for sure, for sure, it happens. Yeah. yeah. And res respect that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And you, you, you know, you've spoken about you talking to God, but also, you know, coming out to say that, you know what, I don't go to church anymore. Why is that? Um, my relationship in, with church became a little bit, um, you know, it became a little bit difficult after I came out because, like I said, and, and even after I talked about this with the, the podcast that I did with BN, so many people said, no, come to our church, our church, we will love you, our church, we will, we will blah, 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 blah. I look at it this way. Church is a building, yeah? People, congregation. My relationship with God, very, very personal. Yeah. It does not, I don't need to enter a building for it to be a better relationship. I don't need to sit around a congregation of people for it to be a better relationship. My relationship with God is very, very personal. And at this particular point, I don't think I am okay going to church to see the hypocrisy that happens in those spaces. Yeah, Because our biggest, our biggest, biggest, one of our biggest challenges in this country, for especially for the LGBTQ community, is religious leaders, is religious leaders. And yet, sometimes we sit down and we're like, the hypocrisy that goes on, you know, behind those walls that we've called a church, I don't think it's worth it for me. So I stopped, I stopped going to church at this particular point, but my relationship with God is very, very personal, yeah. How, how long now? For how long have you not gone to church? Uh, am I really keeping track? Must be over a year plus. Yeah, must be over a year plus. Yeah. yeah. And what does the church need to understand? 
that love is one of the greatest commandments and that if you are part of the church because I actually I saw a comment the other day yeah. that said uh, McKenna you continue doing whatever you're doing the church will never ever accept queer people if that is someone who goes to church love is the greatest commandment of all I don't think if I think about it from the teachings that I know of the Bible that there's a human being who is lesser than the other and should not be able to enter church and should not be able to worship like with everybody else just because of who they are so I think churches should actually practice what they preach that's what I would say practice what you preach yeah yeah and um, you've really achieved a lot of things yeah um, are your parents Proud? Proud. Jesus Christ. Okay. You, do you think your parents are proud of you? Um, I lost both my parents. They're in heaven. Um, I, 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 I know they're proud. I think, I think they're proud. I think they were very much aware of the kind of child that they, you know, you know, took to school. They they saw me doing so many different things. Yeah. So I don't think where they are, they're seated there shocked. Yeah. You know, like oh, this is what they're up to. I think they I think they always knew, you know, from a very young age that this is a very very bold individual. So I think I think they're proud. Yeah. yeah. We've seen the advocacy in uh, L, um, Bold Network. Uh, we've seen the Bold Beer. Then what are other projects that McKenna is working on? Like I said in the beginning of the interview, we do a lot of trainings. Uh, we educate people around diversity, inclusivity, acceptance for the LGBTQ community. What does that mean from a corporate point of view? What does that mean from an HR policy point of view? Uh, we offer those kind of different trainings for organizations across Africa. Uh, we would want to do trainings in, for media people, you know, so that people can be able to know when you're going to interview people like this, what are their pronouns, how do you go about it, how do you do research, blah, 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 all those different kind of things. Uh, we do organize events. I'm sure you have seen the big events that we have been trying to organize. But unfortunately, the government at one particular point decided to cancel them uh, without explaining to us anything. Um, we also do a lot of partnerships with different kind of organizations around uh, SRHR, sexual reproductive health, which is also very, very important for people in the community. There's a lot of discrimination in healthcare, so we also do all those different kind of things. So yeah, so Bold Network Africa has very, very many different things that they do. You can go to our website to see the work that we do, more than just, you know, the things that you actually see. There's so much that goes, you know, under there. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you're speaking about Chimano's event. It was cancelled twice we we really don't know what happened i i actually thought um on the organizing side you you knew what really happened because fans really need answers i think i don't even i think even right now i want to say it's not a chimano's event it was a festival called uh, love and harmony that was organized by very many different parties and of course it was cancelled without any explanation I think the explanations that we were given were quite vague. Um, I, I don't even know if I want to talk about it. You know, of course, we were told there are security issues that weekend. That's why we cannot do our event. But our event was cancelled on a specific day. And still within that same weekend, other events happened. So we can already see what that actually means. But I wish they were bolder enough to just tell us what that means. Because they know that is discrimination, you know, for different human beings, different artists. So it wasn't even a Chimano event. Chimano was one of our artist who was going to headline. There were very many other different artists. So it's not a Chimano event. It was an event called Love and Harmony that was cancelled without really any proper explanation. Yeah. When I Google Chris McKenna, um, a lot of questions about your love life and your personal life that I need to ask you. Are you single? Yes, I am. I am very single. I'm focusing on my company, World Network Africa, and focusing on myself focusing on myself as well yeah so that the, I, I know people are always so interested and blah 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 which is great please continue being interested um, at the moment I am single and I always want this this is the one thing in fact I remember the last time when we met I think we met at the, the launch of uh, Divine I think this is the one thing that I always say I want my life experiences to be able to open up spaces for confidence and boldness for other people in the queer community to love loudly proudly if you can, if you can, if you have a partner, love them loudly, proudly, boldly, you know, because that's the only way that we create space for people to be able to accept us for who we are. I saw so many people, of course, 
been very excited with constantly with my love life like what are you up to oh my god that's beautiful that's what that's what yeah that's what i want people to see um at this particular point i am single and yeah people can continue being interested yeah, yeah. and ready to mingle maybe <laughs> <laughs> very focused on myself but uh if love finds me it finds me yeah, yeah. is do, do you know why people are interested in your love life just any idea I don't know you tell me maybe i i i don't know yeah what why well, i don't know i don't know you who is seated on the other side what can you say well it's it's interesting because you're hot everybody wants to wants to know who you're dating and for a very long time people have had speculations and there there were no names named but people have had speculations that you're dating a businesswoman i don't know whether i should say their name uh Michelle Talami for a very long time and you've never really spoken about whether you were dating Michelle Talami up until now no comment no comment i don't think we need to go down that route no comment i think i've answered enough i am i'm single any other speculations i've answered i am single and on that on that specific topic no comment yeah, yeah. and because when when there's a certain time time she was trending because um she spoke about a person uh she was dating and she, she was using well pronouns but everybody was speculating that is that must be Chris McKenna that must be you i don't know how you reacted to that this is the first time i'm actually doing an interview about this and i think people's private lives should be left alone you know and that's why even here you will hear me say no comment we should not talk about anybody else on an interview we should not talk about someone else's privacy you know someone else's lives it really does not matter to the public so for me no comment if whatever happened trends what no comment no comment people's lives should be as private as possible yeah but uh, because we've seen photos of you before that means you guys are friends are you friends are you close Michelle will always be someone who is uh, going to be in my life. I think that's that's all I can say. Yeah. What are the qualities that you look for in a partner? Why have we moved from serious <laughs> things to relationship 10 questions? No, no, no. We go back. Cuz we 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 need we need to make it a little bit lighter to check check it dog. What are the qualities I need in a partner? Uh, uh I mean just uh have a good uh head over your shoulder be very focused about what you do um be ready to commit and um if if you know be be open to commit to a love uh that you can celebrate openly proudly boldly like i said and someone who is just focused you know in life i think i think that's how i would put it yeah would you want to raise kids in future 100% I will definitely have kids. Yeah. yeah. Are you excited to be a parent in future? Absolutely. Anybody who knows me knows how much I love children. So yes, yes, yes. I am excited to be a parent. I'm just making sure that by the time that specific moment comes, I am ready for it. You know, to take care of a kid, love them, show them to be a beautiful human being who will love everybody and accept everybody for who they are. So yeah, I'm absolutely excited to raise a child in this society that is getting woke by the mom, by by the day. Yeah. Um I I I I must imagine the first time you trended on Twitter it was crazy for you. How was that? No, uh, that's we're going back to 3 years ago. We are on current current situations. Uh trending trending I think for me the first time it ever happened which I think can be an answer for everybody is always very very it's a hard hard situation for anybody to go through. You know when you go to social media and you find other people who do not even know you abusing you, cursing you out, canceling you. It's very very painful. But over time we have understood that this is our life's purpose our life's journey and once like i said once you master who you are and live within your truth then really who are you you know the people who are close to you that's all that matters public opinion to me really never matters at all at all okay. um what would you tell someone who is struggling to come out you said it's bring in there's a word you said what would you advise that particular person I thought about this actually in the morning because there's someone who DM'd me and they were like they're afraid of coming out. Uh the word that I use is letting people into your life. It's not a must. 
You don't need to. You don't need to let people in your life. You don't need to come out if that's a word that if that's a phrase that makes sense for you. If you feel the need to, then do it. If you don't, and you can still exist and feel and live within your space and love and be you, then you don't need to. You know, I think we really give a lot of pressure around coming out. I did not come out. I was outed. So sometimes it happens in very many different ways. But I will keep on saying, just be very sure of your surroundings. Uh, be very sure of where you're at with your mindset, your emotions, all those different kind of things before you decide to let people into your life so that you're able to deal with what that actually means. Yeah, Because the world will never play fair. There are people who might understand you. There are people who might not understand you. So just be ready for that. But also it's not a must. It's not a must. Yeah. Um, to a later question, how does your DM look like? My DM? Yeah. Let's, see. <laughs> Let's see her DM. Oh, their DM. Let's see their DM. Yes. I'm not gonna see. Let me just see. Um, my DM has on every single day, like request. I think when I check, they like over 99 plus. Yeah. So there's sometimes I usually meet people and they're like, ah, I sent you a DM. You never checked, honestly. Like yeah. right now, I've just checked. I have over 100 plus messages that are just on the DM. So the DM is busy. The ones that I get to see. I absolutely appreciate them. I know so many people send me messages of encouragement, you know, just to say we see what you're doing, all those different kind of things. Yeah. Some people are interested in my love life, in my any day life, in anything that I am doing, in yeah. my in my style, in my what. Yeah. So yeah, the the DMs are heavy, but the ones that I get to see, I appreciate it. Do you get weird or crazy DMs? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I I get crazy DMs. <laughs> like what? No, I get crazy DMs. I get people in DMs crashing. I get people in DMs asking me for money. Yeah. I'm like, guys, even me send me that tubes. Like yeah. there's someone who asked me for a loan of like 500K. I was like, guys, send me that money. Even me, I need it. I need it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you get people asking you out? Can you be my partner? Of course, of course it happens. The ones that I see, I answer with, you know, like, no. <laughs> but do you, you respond? The ones that I see. The ones that you see. There's so many that I do not see. Uh, okay. There's so many that I do not see. Yeah. But there are people who maybe express themselves in a kind, you know, way and just say, "This, are you single? Are you what?" And I always answer them truthfully. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, also, um, what um should we expect in future from Makena and Jerry from Bold Network? Like I said, uh, we are celebrating our one year anniversary. Big, big win, big, big win, a lot of impact. Our second year is only going to get bolder. Yeah. Second, uh, uh, second year for McKenna being CEO within Bold Network Africa is McKenna also being bolder and wanting to change the system in one way or another. You know, right now we are in um, elec election season and what, what I keep on saying is I would want to actually see manifestos that are inclusive. I would want to see people who are running for these positions working with people in the queer community to be able to advise them on how you can be able to take care of the current generation and the generation that is coming. Because for how long will we run away from the truth? You know, for how long will we run away from the truth? And like I said, the world is moving forward. So even as a leader, please be very, very sure that your manifestos are moving with the current trends of where the world is going. So I think expect more of that expect seeing McKenna trying to educate people more see Bold Network Africa do more projects continue seeing us becoming bolder louder we will not we will not uh, be afraid to speak up when it comes to issues around the LGBTQ community yeah thank you so much we really do appreciate Asante Sana thank you to Tim Mpasho thank you to Kalondu Thank you to Elizabeth. Like I know you guys have been so, so committed to doing inclusive stories, you know, and um, I absolutely appreciate this. You know, wait, we can't wait to see how it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Asante. Asante Sana. Well, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please do remember to subscribe, to share, to like, to comment. My name is Kalondu Musimi. Behind the camera is the one and only Wilfred Nyangaris. And big up to Elizabeth Ngigi. Bye.